The prices of used cars exploded unpredictably during the pandemic, with millions of consumers spending their savings and relief packages on new sets of wheels. See, we've experienced several turnarounds in the past, but the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown was just another perfect storm that the auto industry needed to explode. 2020 was predicted to be a year of deep recession, and many manufacturers were forced to cancel their orders for semiconductors to protect themselves considerably against the impacts of this supposed recession. But before we could experience it, governments worldwide began to print money to save the situation, and somehow, the world miraculously survived. Now, where is this going? Thanks to this proactive measure, as we love to call it, the demand for used and new cars began to skyrocket. However, because the supply of new cars wasn't as much as that of used cars, primarily because of the semiconductor shortage, customers began to prioritize used vehicles, with the demand ballooning beyond levels anyone could have expected. People weren't really spending on travel, eating out, or live entertainment because we were all confined to our homes. So instead, they cough out their money to buy cars. As many people called it, these consumers were chasing cars. And it was pretty much easy for them to fork out the money. Think about it. Less spending on other categories of frivolities, and on the other hand, they had cheaper access to capital via low-cost auto loans and coronavirus economic relief packages. Now, since consumers were ready to do literally anything to acquire these used cars, the prices surged in response, breaking price limits and setting even newer records. To put this into perspective, the wholesale prices for used cars skyrocketed about 70% between January 2020 and January 2022. That is higher than what the industry has ever experienced. See, during this period, several crazy purchase stories filled the internet. People paid insane prices for old pickup trucks with more than 100,000 miles and can barely run. Flooded cars filled the market, and people didn't desist from buying them. Dealers were also refusing to sell vehicles at the prices recommended by the manufacturers. The scenarios were truly a lot. The going seemed good, and things weren't looking to slow down anytime soon in the auto market until recently when the market's ever-growing bubble burst on our faces all of a sudden. There has been an apparent steady drop in the prices of vehicles, almost at the same rate at which they rose. In nine months, more than a 15% decline in prices of used cars has been recorded. From all indications, we are finally at our last dance, and used cars are eventually returning to their actual place and value, used. But honestly, the actual value isn't much of our concern in this video. The big question on our lips is, why is this happening? What needle pricked the bubble and made it burst suddenly? What exactly caused this accelerated price decrease in the auto market? In the simplest explanation possible, the crash in the price of used cars is caused primarily by the reduced demand for used vehicles. We have overcome the semiconductor shortage, and new cars are back in sufficient supply. Secondly, interest rates are increasing, which is somehow reducing demand and purchasing power. For example, at least 37% of used cars sold in the United States are being sold with financing. Similarly, dealers reportedly sell over 60% of their volume with loans, and as these loans are getting more expensive, it becomes more challenging for consumers to acquire vehicles. In the end, it is always a ripple effect, and people like you and I are typically at the receiving end. 2020 was the year, the real year of multiple heart-wrenching incidents cut across various sectors, thanks to the novel coronavirus pandemic. Thankfully, things soon began to return to normal in 2021 with restrictions eased, normal operations resumed, and life just had to continue. As we mentioned earlier, this was the best time people bought cars the most. Literally, almost everyone. And if you couldn't get your hands on one, then you actually kissed your opportunity goodbye. Russia's invasion of Ukraine was also a primary culprit of the auto market bubble. Warfare undoubtedly has severe temporary and permanent consequences. Ukraine is one of the leading sources of wiring supplies to the European Union, and when the war began, production significantly slowed down, leading to fewer vehicles from European manufacturers, which was lower than the demand. Remember, people had money to buy, but now there are fewer vehicles to go around. So people had to settle for used cars while the price of the available new ones shot to the moon, and people weren't expecting it to come down anytime soon. 
Many believed that manufacturers wouldn't be able to produce so much to meet up with the soaring demand for a very long time and simply continue riding the upward trend of prices. The COVID-19 pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war were the crust of the shortage and the resulting market bubble. The bubble has continued until recently. The dance has come to an end, and we seem to be back at the starting point again. Or maybe worse than we used to be. Somewhere around that axis. We have now more than likely passed the peak of prices in the automobile market. Like the Bitcoin crash about two years ago, it is now very obvious that we are headed for the bottom. Hopefully we don't find oil on the way. To put this into perspective, wholesale prices have begun the decline curve, which, over time, retail prices are expected to reduce accordingly. Now, this might not have been a problem in just a regular market movement. However, our issue now is that the benchmark has been set exceedingly and unrealistically high, and now the fall would be more than the walls of Babylon. I hope you get the joke again this time. What is supposed to be a regular decline has now become a big issue bigger than what we might even be predicting. The auto market bubble has popped, which is the absolute reality we must acknowledge and prepare for as we begin the new year 2024. Everything makes sense when we examine the trend of how newer vehicles are currently priced. What used to be on the high side of the graph has continued to take giant backward strides, and somehow, rising inventories are one of the primary factors contributing to these price drops. Normally, before the bubble, Car dealers had about two to three months worth of sales in stock, just enough to go around. However, during the auto market bubble, they barely have just a few days as most of their stocks have been pre-ordered. But now, the fleets of these same dealers are growing, which implies more supply, forcing them to sell some vehicles for far less than their estimated values. The situation has completely turned around, and it's more than apparent. Tesla is one of the perfect examples out there. Earlier this year, Tesla announced they would be slashing their prices globally by at least 20%. We all know what that means. Or don't you? Is this a relief in sight? Well, what we know is that automakers will soon be able to produce more than enough new vehicles to balance the market completely. And although the pandemic still exists and the Russia-Ukraine war hasn't been called off, the vehicle market is finally gaining momentum, and prices are dropping rapidly. The average new car price just dropped for the first time in 20 months. The supply of new cars is also climbing, and incentives are back. The bubble of more than two years has finally popped, and now might not be the best time to order that car because all eyes are turned to even lower sticker prices than we have today. The signs are more than obvious and the safest bet would be to continue waiting out the story, allowing the tsunami to pass before proceeding with any purchases. What do you think about this, too? Do you also believe that the auto market bubble has finally burst, or is it a mere reaction that will fade soon? We would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. While you're at it, you can check out other exciting content on this channel by clicking on the videos on your screen. What we think about the crumbling economy of China is a good way to begin. See you there.